Hello everybody, and we're back today talking about steady state error. And today we're going to start in MATLAB because I wanted to show you, based on some of the simulation results, something that can happen called steady state error, and then we'll move back to the board and analyze why that happens. So, if we go back to our proportional control, and I have saved it in the desktop over here. So here I have it already brought up here. So here again is our system, our feedback system. We have our plant. This is our control. Our output is Y. We have a Y ref. And our error is here. Here this is just proportional control. And when we ran this, we can see that we have a steady state error. So again, this is our input, our Y ref. This is our error, and we see that it stabilizes to some error value that is not zero. And here, this is our output. Our output does not go to our reference point, which is one. It goes to one half. And you might be wondering, why does that happen? The intent right, of the control is to make it follow YREF. That's why we put this difference, so that we can try to drive this error to zero. But in our system, that's not happening. And in proportional control, this kind of makes sense because if we have an error of zero here, so if we drive, say we drive our error to zero, and we put that through our transfer function, our output will be zero. And that would mean that yrf minus zero is, is a non-zero value. So it, it does not equal to the error equals zero. So we can't have that system. So we actually have to find there's some other error value that will make this difference the same as that error value. So we're going to go through and actually calculate using this example. So here we have this plant function, and we have just basic proportional control. And we're going to go and analyze why we get the steady state error and how we can calculate it. We've redrawn the system here that we just talked about in MATLAB. and. Of course, we have our feedback loop. And just to go through the logic, the intuitive logic again, so if we, we would want to drive the error to zero, but say, theoretically, that error, this error is zero, we're able to achieve that. So if we say E is equal to zero, then in our proportional control, we just multiply it so that we know our value here would also have to be zero. So the input here to our system would be zero. But if we think about what this system is, this is a equivalent to e to the since it's a one a negative one t times your input, so u of t, whatever the input value. If our input value is zero, meaning our step goes from zero to zero, our output will also be zero. So that would mean that y is equal to zero here. So if y is equal to zero, then v ref y ref minus y, which is 0, y ref minus y, which has to be equal to e. That's how we define it. But if this is equal to 0 and that's equal to 0, we have a problem. So y ref minus 0 is not equal to 0 because y ref, we choose that value. And only if we choose it to be 0 would this satis equation be satisfied. So we have a problem in that there has to be a different value of the error that will satisfy this full equation. So, in short, what that means is that we have a steady state error, and we have to figure out what that value is. So to do that, let's think about what the basic equation for this feedback loop is. So again, if we start at this point, E, our error we know is equal to y ref, Oops, and I'm gonna, we're going to be in the Laplace domain, so capital Y ref minus Y. That's our E, right? So this is the error. And if we take that and we multiply it by GC, and then we multiply it by GP, we get Y out again. This is our feedback loop. The input depends on the output. So this is our basic equation. And let's fill in our values here. So here we have proportional control, and here's our system. Pretty easy. We end up with y ref minus y multiplied by 1 over s plus 1. And then that equals our y again. 
And we're going to bring this back into the time domain so that we can think about steady state. So let's just first do the reverse Laplace here. I'm going to do two steps at once. I'm also going to multiply this over here. So this we'll have on the side y ref minus y. And now we're back in the time domain. And here we have the derivative of y plus a y. And if we move this, this y over here, we would get that y ref is equal to the derivative plus 2 times the y. Okay, so this is our, our same equation as uh, this system. Now we want to consider steady state. So steady states, once everything's stabilized and the dynamics, such as y dot, are no longer a positive or negative value. They're all zero. So if we look at steady state, that means y dot is equal to zero. Then we simply get y ref is equal to 2y. So if we want to know the steady state y value, we can see pretty easily that that would be y is equal to y ref over 2. Okay, so that's for this specific equation, but you can do the same process for any of these equations to figure out what the steady state y value would be here. And then we also want to know the error, right? So let's just go back to our definition of the error. So our steady state error would be, and I guess we'll put SS here for steady state, and we would have y ref minus our y steady state, right? If we just plug that back in there, we'll see that our error steady state is just going to be equal to y ref minus 1 over y ref over 2 is just, again, y ref over 2. So these would be our steady state y value and our steady state error. If we think about the example we just did uh, in MATLAB, we had y ref equal to 1. And we saw that our error went to 1 half, so error steady state went to y ref over 2, which is 0 0.5. And our y ref went to the same value. Oops, sorry. <laughs> steady state. Our steady state y also went to 0 0.5. So that confirms that our analysis here and what we got for our simulation, simulation results are consistent. So if we want to calculate the steady state error, we can look at, bring it back to the time domain. We can do this process to figure out the steady state error. The important part is that you take out this, you make all the dynamics higher level, the derivative all zero, and you can calculate the steady state error.